All right, thanks for making the Locked On Ole Miss podcast your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast, including YouTube. Do us a favor, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell for notifications, comment on the video, and upvote it. That'll make us very happy. Derek Vandegriff is here for his weekly Ole Miss baseball report. But before we get started on that, Derek, Jameer Lewis, um, a freshman at Southwest Community College, has just committed to Ole Miss or signed. It looks like he will be here for spring. So it may be a transfer portal type thing instead of an LOI type thing. But this is Mm -hmm. another Jack linebacker. So out of the four signees that Pete Golding got in the late period, three of them are Jack linebackers. Um, If you look at his highlights on Huddle, I mean, he's a pretty exciting player. He's got three years of on-field eligibility. He's just a freshman mm-hmm. this year. So uh, I, I think this should be pretty cool. I just wanted to say this before we get into the baseball stuff because it broke before we record it. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's, uh, you know, if, if anybody's been keeping up with, uh, you know, the Locked On podcast, that's that's one position you've talked about for a while now, right? That, that Jack linebacker position. It's obviously something that Pete Golding and, and that staff is, has really looked at to, to try to upgrade there. And, you know, yeah, he does look like a pretty impressive player. And uh, kind, of, kind of like you said, having the three years of eligibility out of JUCO, that's that's something you don't see a whole lot of anymore. So, yeah, hope, hopefully he can come in and, and make an impact for us. Yeah, exactly. And if, if people watch today's show, the second segment of today's show is about how Pete Golding is essentially having to create at that position at yeah. Ole Miss. And that's why it was so busy in this late signing period area let's move on to baseball uh the defending national champions i I do still like saying that and we can say that for a little while longer um we we can say it for another several months and as as a matter of fact i can promise everybody that's how this show will open every single week when i'm on this podcast the defending national champions and they have an interesting schedule um set up for them this year talk about that a little bit Derek. Uh, yeah, you know, we, we basically play two Power 5 schedules, which is kind of odd, really. Uh, you know, we, we, we open up with Delaware State here in a couple weeks, but after that, every weekend series before we get into SEC play, it's all Big Ten. You know, we as soon as we get done with Delaware State, we get Maryland coming into Oxford, and that is a huge, huge series for us. They're a top 15 team in the country. They're uh, the overwhelming favorite to win the Big Ten Conference. And so that's that's a really big series for us coming in. And uh, right after that, we go up to Minnesota and play in the Cambria College Classic, which is a SEC Big Ten tournament up there where Friday night we play, guess who? Maryland again. So we get them for four straight weekend games. Uh, and, and, and then we play Minnesota on Saturday, Nebraska on Sunday. And then when we come back from that, we end up playing Southern Miss in the midweek game and then come home for – Three games against Purdue, who got off to an incredibly hot start last year before fading off. Uh, you know, this this isn't your standard non-conference schedule that you see most teams play. You know, we're, we're playing Power 5 teams week in, week out, outside of Delaware State to open things. And uh, not only Power 5 teams, but really good ones, too. Like, like I said, Maryland is a very, very, very good team. They're the overwhelming favorite to win the Big Ten Certainly a team that you're going to see come uh, postseason time, possibly even hosting coming up this year. So, you know, that's that's a heck of a scheduling job one way or another, however you want to look at it. It's either a good one or a bad one, I guess. But but you're you're going to find out pretty quick what these Ole Miss Rebels are made out of. And, you know, even after that three-game set with Maryland when they come home, we uh, we go with the midweek games and we play two against La Tech who's who's a pretty good group of five team this year you know they, they've always been pretty consistent i think they hosted a regional two years ago if i'm not mistaken uh had a pretty good year last year too that's that's a program that's that's always one of the better group of five programs in the country and you know we we welcome them to oxford and and then when we get into sec play which i know we're gonna get to here in just a minute uh man you you had better strap up because it it, it is some tough sledding for the rebels when we get into the conference well, we talk about that, that, that other than the Delaware State game, which is kind of the get right weekend, it sounds mm-hmm. like, getting into college baseball. Yeah. What does the pitching rotation look like behind Hunter Elliott? Yeah, you know, I think uh, you're going to see Grayson Saunier there on Saturday. I think that's pretty established. Uh, you know, I, I, I could be wrong. Obviously, there hasn't been an announcement about it, but everything you see and read about this kid, you know, he's, 
he's this freshman stud just coming in right out of the gates that we've seen, quite frankly, time in and time out with Mike Bianco and the staff. They're always able to get really good starting pitchers, really good shortstops, and really good catchers. It's, it's, it's kind of been the – you know, the hallmark of this program ever since they've been here. And, and it looks like they've got a real stud with Grayson Saunier there on Saturday. Uh, we talked about him a little bit Tuesday in the uh, Twitter space, if y'all tuned into that. But, you know, he's he's a guy that will consistently sit in the mid-90s, 94, 95, and with the ability to get up to 98 miles an hour. You know, he's he, he's a real live arm from the right side of the – right side of the mound and the sliders where he's going to make his money. I know I said it on the last podcast, but I mean, when, when people actually get a chance to see this thing, I mean, it's, it's a very, very impressive pitch. It's going to get a lot of people out. Um, his big thing is making sure he comes in and, and learns how to pitch. You know, this is the SEC. This isn't high school. You're not going to come in and blow everybody away and be able to rely on your fastball. You know, it's kind of like uh, if you go back to Gunnar Hoagland's freshman year, that's kind of what he thought he would come in and do, right? He would come in and throw his fastball, mix in a breaking ball here and there, and just be able to get guys out. But he always threw it in the zone. you got to be able to trust your stuff, throw it out of the zone, and trust you got enough movement. Uh, whether it be break, run on a fastball, whatever it may be, uh, and then the change of speeds to get guys out and, and, and to make them chase and swing and miss a little bit. And that's what got Gunner in trouble his freshman year. But after that, we saw the results of him. He was an absolute stud from his sophomore year on. Um, and then after that, it's kind of a toss-up. You know, you've got another really, really good freshman, J.T. Quinn. Uh, he'll either work into the Sunday or the midweek rotation. And Xavier Rivas, the transfer out of D2 Indianapolis. He's a lefty, kind of a crafty guy, upper 80s, you know, 87, 88, 89, but has a really good breaking ball to keep guys off balance, kind of try to keep them guessing a little bit. Uh, so if he can, you know, find find a way to get hitters out, he's got scoring line on his defense a lot. And, and that's something that's really strong for this group too this year. You know, you look up the middle with Calvin Harris, Patton, uh, Peyton Chatagnier, Jacob Gonzalez, and then you'll have Ethan Groff out there in center. Uh, a, a really strong, strong group up the middle, which kind of plays into the hands of a guy like Xavier Rivas. You know, going to the other side of the plate, you know, um, Taiwan Malone, the other day in an inner squad game, had three home runs. Um, yeah. Just really killed the ball. If you looked at exit velocities off of bats, he was like four out of the top five. And normally yeah. that's a that's a Ken, Kemp Alderman um, type thing. Mm -hmm. is, is there a real chance for Taiwan Malone to see the field this year? Yeah, well, one thing I thought was really funny about that, that that you brought up, he had four of the top five exit velocities, but he wasn't number one. And I'm sure you can guess who was number one that day, right? Yeah, you know, right. But, but, but yeah, it's the same thing, though. I mean, he's he hits the ball so hard when he makes contact. Uh, Taiwan's one of those guys that's really interesting going into this year. You know, there's, there's some at-bats to be had at – it designated hit, uh, hitter. Uh, we we've talked about it before. I I kind of thought Will Furness would be the leader going in to the year to get those at bats. And you know, the, from what I've read, I think that is kind of the plan. But with a showing like that, you're going to see Taiwan get some at bats here in the non-conference slate. And uh, you know, and and I think that's also something really important people need to remember during non-conference play. We're going to tinker with this lineup, this pitching staff, try to find roles not only in starting rotation but the bullpen but also with the plate, getting guys to play different positions. You're going to see Kemp Alderman getting some uh, games at catcher to, to, to spell Calvin Harris. You know, they, they seem to feel really good about him being a backup catcher now. Uh, but, but, yeah, Taiwan, going back to him real quick, though, he's, he's obviously a guy that, that has incredible power potential, kind of what we saw from Kemp Alderman his freshman year when – he played sparingly, uh, did, didn't hit super well, but Taiwan played sparingly but did hit really well, right? He, he ended up hitting 444, just not in a whole lot of at-bats. And then when he did connect on it, you saw the exit velocities, and uh, you know you saw that when he cranked out of the park earlier in the year last year too. So, yeah, it, it, it'll be interesting to see him get in there, see if he can work his way in. Uh, I think one thing that's important to remember about Taiwan, though, he doesn't have all those at bats, not not only at the college level, but the high school level. His junior season was canceled due to COVID, right? Mm -hmm. And then his senior year, he ended up tearing that ACL and ended up missing all the baseball season that year too. So, I mean, you're, you're talking about a guy that's really only had, you know, nine at bats in three years between the high school and college level. So, you know, he – and then he plays football too, so he misses all the uh, – 
you know, fall ball and stuff like that that we do too. And, and, and so he's not working on it every day, but it's obviously very encouraging that he can go out there without getting that work and missing those two years of high school and still being able to put up the numbers that he did this past Saturday, three home runs and then a 115 mile an hour single off the wall. Yeah, and, and, and it's also something to keep an eye on um, with Pete Golding coming in in a new defensive system. They're, he's mm-hmm. probably going to have some spring practice work that he has to get in because oh, everybody yeah. needs to remember with Taiwan, if a player is on football and baseball scholarship, football mm-hmm. is the one that's paying the bill there. So he yeah. is going to go over and practice a little bit in spring. So we'll see exactly yeah. how that mm-hmm. goes. Yeah, 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 he absolutely will. Uh, but, but again, incredible power potential, a guy that can really hit if he's given the opportunity and he's able to figure things out. You know, I'm, I'm sure here in the latter part of, uh, of uh, practices leading up to the season, they're going to be feeding him a heavy dose of change-up slider, stuff like that, off-speed, see if he can hit something besides a fastball. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, who are some of the new names for us to watch? I know we covered this a couple of weeks ago, but let's give it again mm-hmm. for people a little bit later on since practice has started. Who, who yeah. does people need to keep an eye on? All right, well, I mean, right out of the gates at first base, Anthony Calarco is going to be your starting first baseman transferred from Northwestern, uh, a, a guy that can really hit the ball. Uh, I don't know if you saw the video of the – uh, I, I think it was either this past weekend or the weekend before they had him mic'd up and he ended up having a really good inter squad game that time. You know, he, he's a guy that hits doubles. He, he, he's able to get it out of the ballpark. Uh, but one of those consistent 300 hitters that's going to put the bat on the ball, a big kid, a really good defender over there at first base. Um, and then outside of him, you've got Ethan Groff in center field. We touched on him a second ago a legit power speed guy that is a plus plus defender there in center that's actually going to end up i think pushing mccants out of center field i think he's going to take over that role and push mccants to one of the corner outfield spots um so him batting probably towards the top of the lineup i would guess and and i think he's the kind of guy that'll help keep this offense from getting bogged down right you know, like how many times do we see last year that if we weren't hitting you know, one, two, three, four home runs a game. We just weren't scoring. That's the only way we could score. He's the kind of guy that can get on base. He walks. He hits for a very high average. He can steal bases, but he can also put it over the fence at the same time, too. So he's he's one of those five tool players that can really help you at the top of that lineup. Uh, and then we have all these new pitchers coming in, and, you know, that's where you've got to figure it out. We're kind of a broken record from last year. You know, figure out the pitching – and then the offense will take care of itself, right? And and it's kind of the same way this year, except it's with a lot of young guys, the Sony A's, Revis, JT Quinn, those guys, you know, very, very talented guys that can come in and hold their own. And uh, it should, it'll be really interesting, though, throughout the non-conference slate to see all of the roles these guys fall into. Uh, you know, you think last year, going into last year, we thought, you know, that our short rotation would be just fine if we could figure out the bullpen pieces to get it to Brandon Johnson. And then you start out with Derek Diamond, John Gaddis, and Drew McDaniel, and then none of those three yeah. are starters for you by the time you make the big run to actually get into the postseason to Omaha and win a national championship. Um, so that's just kind of how pitching is, but it's also a credit to Mike and this staff that they've done for, you know, 20, what was it, 23, 20, four years, whatever it is now, 25. And it's been a minute. Yeah, I mean, but but they do it every single year, you know, and, and so you trust them to be able to figure out the arms and, and to get them in the right place and, and put them in a position to succeed because you've got more than two decades of evidence saying that they're going to be able to get it done. All right, what day is opening day? When, do, when does it kick off or t- first pitch? <laughs> <laughs> February 18th will be the first one. Delaware State at home. We get a three-game set there. So about about um, two weeks from Friday. Um, yeah, so. yeah, that's it. Two All weeks, right. we're going to get this. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start running this thing back and march our way to Omaha and win another one. Well, um, one more question before I let you go. Is there any signals out there? Is there anything in the ether right now? that says, hey, this monkey is off of Mike Bianco's back and off of this team's back, and all of these ghosts that Ole Miss has dealt with for 20 years, that's gone. Is, is, this, a, is this a looser team? Yeah, yeah, it is. And, and you know, it's kind of funny because you almost saw it last year when things went so poorly. They almost 
got to that point because so many people thought it was over, right? You, you, you're not sitting there pressing. And that's when we started playing our best baseball. But, yeah, absolutely it is. You know, you go and you uh, beat Southern Miss down in Hattiesburg, which is always, you know, a, a demon for us, right? And then you go to Baton Rouge, and you don't want to beat them in Baton Rouge. You sweep them. And then you come back and you get in a regional with Miami, who come up to Oxford and beat you in a Super Regional back in the 2000s. You play Arizona, who just lost in the Super Regionals after the year before. And then, you know, it's just one thing after another. You go back down to Hattiesburg for a Super Regional, the, the, the series that Mike just couldn't win, right? You know, it's, and not only that, it was the in-state rival down there in Hattiesburg, the team that he couldn't beat up until a few weeks prior to that. And not only did he beat them, he went down there and he shut them out for two straight games and never gave them the first hope of winning that entire series. Uh, and then, you know, you get to Omaha and you get Auburn and you beat them. And then the, the game to get you to the national championship couldn't have worked out any better. It was Arkansas. Mm -hmm. Arkansas, Arkansas, Arkansas. The biggest knife in the side of Mike Bianco throughout his tenure in Oxford, right? You know, you, you lose that Super Regional to Fay in, in, in Fayetteville a couple of years ago, and just every time we had a big game against him, we just couldn't get over the hump. And, I mean, that's what he did throughout that entire run, though. If you look back at it, he exercised every single demon of his career and not only got to Omaha, got to the National Championship Series, he won it in convincing fashion. And if you listen to this podcast, you know, there for the last two months, it was nothing mm -hmm. more than a formality because – those guys had one thing on their mind. It was lifting that trophy and what nobody getting in their way. And, you know, that's that's what they did. But, yeah, monkey's off the back. Mike's going to play a lot looser. Saw where he's going to start implementing the shift, which I thought I would never see from Mike Bianco in my entire mm -hmm. life. He's gonna start, yeah, he's going to start shifting this year. You know, that's one of the weirdest things I'd ever seen him seen out of Mike Bianco. But uh, interesting to see how that works out, I guess. But he's he's kind of evolved the last few years and uh, you kind of saw it in his coaching style, and this is just another example of that, of how he can change with the times. Uh, you know, as long as the rules allow it, he's he's going to use it, and he's going to do whatever he can to put his guys in the best position to win. He's got a lot of really talented guys there in Oxford this year, too, and there's no reason that we shouldn't make another run. Are we going to um, get bearded Mike Bianco back? Man, I hope so. That was the best Mike Bianco. That was the best look for Mike Bianco there ever was. Beard, shaved head. And just go out there and raise a whole bunch of hell. Yeah, seriously. That was great. Anyway, thanks again for making the Locked On Ole Miss podcast your first listen every day. Thank you for making us your morning show for Ole Miss as well. But make sure you check out our brand new podcast, the Locked On College Basketball Podcast. It's everything you need to know about college basketball in one place. Plus, hear from big-name experts, insiders, coaches, and players. Locked On College Basketball. It's available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcast. Derek, thank you very much for stopping by, talking a little bit of Ole Miss baseball. Hey, we even got some recruiting information in at the yeah. beginning of this. Yeah. Yeah. Everything you need in one spot right here. One stop yeah, shop. Thanks. I hope everybody enjoys their weekend. And, Derek, thank you very much for coming by here and, and hotty toddy, man. All right, bud. Hotty toddy. Hotty toddy.